Hi, this is Clint Lanier, um, College Assistant Professor of Professional Communication at New Mexico State University. And today we're going to be talking about graphics, when and how to use them, uh, especially for technical communication. So let's get started. The most important points to make here are that graphics can more easily convey complex information than words by themselves can. Um, therefore, graphics can make information easier to understand. Uh, now, when we discuss what technical communication is, what it's for, it should be understood that technical communication should help make information easier to understand for readers, and it should also make information easier to find for readers. Using graphics can help us do both of those things. So graphics are very, very important to use, and they're a, a very important resource for us to use uh, when we are designing technical communication. It's also important to remember that we should only use graphics for a specific purpose. Graphics should only be used for one of three things. They should be used to show how to perform an action, to show how something looks or what should result um, when you are performing an action, and to make complicated information easier, easy to understand. And, and really that's it. What's missing from this list, if you, if you notice, is things like decorations. Uh, you'll see notes on bulletin boards and, and, and so forth that have kind of funny borders or, or funny clip art on them. And they're using them really for decoration. There's no real purpose for them to be there. Graphics are not used for that. So if you turn in a paper or if you create a paper or a document that has a, a graphic on it that is kind of related to the subject but isn't exactly what the subject is about or really does not match one of these three purposes, that graphic shouldn't be there. It's as, it's as simple as that, really. So here we have a very simple example of to show how to perform an action. You'll notice this graphic is something that you might see, say, in a swimming pool um, or a restaurant in a kitchen, perhaps. Uh, but you'll notice that it's displaying how to perform CPR, specifically on children. Each of the different bubbles provides a different step. And you can imagine that, again, if you think about seeing something like this at a swimming pool, typically they're really, really big signs. They may be three feet across by five feet uh, high. And it's so that you can see them easily from across the pool. Now, if that were to occur, if you had to perform CPR across the pool from where the sign was located, you wouldn't be able to read any of the text. Well, the point of this graphic, the point of the instructions, is that you shouldn't have to read the text. You can easily see what the person is supposed to be doing just by looking at the graphics. Of course, number one, we have no idea what she's pointing at or why she's pointing at it. But going down from number two, we can see that she's checking the airway and she's uh, recessing the neck a little bit so that they, she can uh, help her breathe. She's checking for pulse and so forth. But each of those are quickly seen in the graphics themselves. So this is showing how to perform the action without any text uh, involved at all. Also, Graphics are used to show how something looks or what should result. And we often see this in something like software, software instructions. And this is an example. So say uh, you have in on the left-hand column, you have basically it says what should result after you do something. So once the Internet Explorer icon is selected, you should see the New Mexico Tech homepage. Now that's one way to put it. But on the right hand, you see you should see the following screen. And then it shows an example of what that screen should look like. Which one to you is easier to quickly relay? Obviously, it's the one on the right. And that's the kind of thing that we want to do when we write instructions specifically, is we want to show somebody what something should look like as a result of the action that they've taken. And then lastly, we want to use graphics to make complicated information easier to understand. And you can see all three of these charts do that. In the pie chart, you're separating out information so that somebody can quickly see what takes up the most money, for example, to be that one in yellow. Now, you don't want to, uh, you might not even know what that is, but you can quickly see where each of the, uh, the, the expenditures are. The line graph will show you kind of a trend over time, and then you have the, the bar graph on the upper left, which allows you to compare values according to an X and Y axis. Now, you could do the exact same thing through text, but which would be easier? If you were to write out a paragraph of text explaining that pie graph, or if you were simply to, to show it through an image and then explain it, which would make more sense to the reader? And obviously, using the graphic is going to make a lot more sense. So here, if it's really complicated information, 
we want to use graphics as much as possible. Now that also includes tables. Tables count as graphics. So if you have a lot of numerical data or you have a lot of data that you want to compare and, 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 um, and stretch across different, different uh, categories, you'll want to put it into tables as much as possible because it does the exact same thing as any of these charts or, or, or graphs do. Now the last thing I want to say about graphics is that you absolutely have to use text with the graphics. You can't simply put a graphic on a page or on a piece of paper and uh, allow the reader to understand what that graphic means or what it's for. You can't do that. You have to do three things. You have to refer to the graphic in the text. In other words, you have to say, according to figure one or according to table two or whatever it happens to be. You have to refer to it in the text. You also have to give that graphic a, a title. In other words, figure one or table one or whatever it has to be. And then you also need to give it a descriptive name. Now, the reason you do that is so that somebody can look at that graphic and quickly understand what it is, what it is I'm looking at. So if you look at this painting in front of you, do you have any idea what that is? It looks like just a lot of spattered paint. And in honesty, it, it really is. But the name of the painting is Galaxy, okay? And it kind of looks that way. It's a painting by Jackson Pollock, and it, it could kind of be a galaxy with the stars going in and out and so forth. Or maybe not, I don't know. But the point is that if you put this up on a wall with no context around it, you have no idea what it means. But if you put that simple title of the painting, Galaxy, next to it, it might give it a little context for it, okay? So when you use graphics in a document, you have to put a, a title on it, you have to give a descriptive, uh, well, you have to give it a name, you have to give it a descriptive title, and you have to refer to it in the document itself, okay? And that's it. That's uh, all there is to, to graphics. That's, that's all I'm going to talk about right now.